G'day guys, welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters in Singapore, made out in Idra again to bring you MVP versus Curious again. Yep, really exciting to see a rematch of these two. Like we were saying before the break, uh, it really seemed like Curious knew what he wanted to do and it was just hard for him to make it work against MVP. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he has another shot. Um, he does. And it is his last shot, obviously. One does not get more than two chances in this group uh, sort of format here. So would like to see uh, another three-game series. They're very closely matched, I have to say, as far as skill level goes. Uh, obviously, MVP got the edge there, but I would not be surprised to see Curious win in a 2-1 as well. Um, there he is there. Yeah, that game on Akalon, Curious looked pretty much perfect. Even when MVP felt like he had control of the game, Curious was just sitting back waiting for his opportunity, and when it came, he took it. And I really felt like that third game, Curious definitely could have won if he had just been a little bit more aggressive with his army. Um, it really felt like he was right on the edge of it, even though the game didn't look close. Uh, that kind of situation is surprisingly nice edge. If MVP doesn't get the situation or get the setup and the positioning that he, he wanted, that he got, yeah. it doesn't look nearly as bad. So it, Curious it, definitely, even though he lost the first series, definitely very capable of winning this one. Yeah, I mean, in that third game, in the third game and the first game, MVP just got that sweet spot with his 2-2 mech right in between the reinforcement paths of all the hatcheries. And what do you do at that point? Everything that pops out of the hatcheries just dies. Doesn't get to rejoin, become that big bowl. And the first game is going to be on Frost, where the third game was last time. Yep. Uh, the game where MVP did do his mech timing and we really felt like Curious could have held it. So see if he's going to switch anything up, if both of them are going to do the same as builds. And both players are level 9 now, which means that they are still very closely matched. That's good. So. I like to keep things even. That's right. In the top right here from Startail, we have got the Zerg player Curious, the Frankenzerg. I really think the Frankenstein nickname should be reserved for Grubby. Really? I really feel like it's ah. much more fitting for him. Okay. Well, we'll see a little bit of him late, later, actually. So uh, in the bottom right here from Team LGIN, this is MVP. Wow. <laughs> that observer camera. Shout out to Infezza, by the way. He's been doing a great job. Doesn't get any breaks like we do, so. Send him a lot of love on the Twitter, please. Thank you very much. And we interestingly do actually have mirror, or the exact same positions that we had the previous game on Frost. And Curious Overlord scouting first again. Um, if I remember right, MVP opened up with 14 CC and Curious did a gasless expansion. So mm -hmm. again, MVP, when he has a build order uh, lined up that he thinks is working well and that he's very confident in, and he did win with it both games previously, so it wouldn't be too surprising if he wants to go with the mech style again, although he does open up with barracks first, so already a bit of a deviation, but it's still possible to go into that mech timing from a Reaper opening. I would not be very surprised if he, does, if he just plays exactly the same way this game. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, apart from the whole Reaper thing, but wow. uh, but Mech just worked out for him so well, and if it ain't, don't, ain't broke, don't fix it. It's something I believe in, uh, you know, and I'm sure a lot of players do too. It's actually something, it it makes sense, and just thinking about it, you're like, yeah, if it's winning, I should probably keep doing it, but a lot of players will be scared off something that's a little bit non-standard, like that Mech timing. They will be scared off doing it too many times in a row because they feel like it'll get figured out. MVP is one of those players who really has the confidence, like if he thinks something is going to work, he will keep doing it until it actually loses, not until he thinks it might get figured out. So he is definitely not going to shy away from it just because he did it previously. Uh, yeah, I completely agree with you. So, uh, you know, um, Curious is going to find MVP in a couple seconds here. And, and there he is. He's actually going to open up Speedling this game, so a different build from him as well. And again, a Speedling against Reaper, that's that's what you want to be happening. And MVP lagging out a little bit. Just like the last series, so... Yep. Yep. Bit of lag in that first game. No big drama, though. Um, so, yeah, this map, big four-player map. Do you generally like to veto four-player maps? Or are you? Uh, do you like the? I mean, this is obviously a decent map for Zerg, spawn dependent. In uh, ZVZ, four-player maps are absolutely atrocious. So 100% yes there. But in ZVT and ZVP, it more depends on the expansion setups. Uh, a map like Whirlwind, it gets very hard to start expanding beyond your fourth base as Zerg because uh, Terran kind of just drops Marauders everywhere and kills off hatcheries. And on this map, if you just look at it, the first four bases are pretty okay. The fourth base is pretty exposed because it's out in the center, but they're all at least close to each other. But anything beyond that, 5th, 6th, anything from there on, becomes very, very hard to hold on to. It's all very far away from your starting location. Mm. And in my opinion, that makes the game very, very hard for Zerg. Because if Terran secures those four bases, Terran can go for a long time on four bases. But if Zerg is on equal economy, if Zerg can't get that fifth base up, it gets tough. Um, so I would definitely... I feel like this is going to be pretty uncomfortable for Zerg if it goes beyond the early mid-game. Yeah. Or if they go into the mid-game without a pretty big advantage. So very similar to Whirlwind, I, I think. 
Yeah, it's actually a similar size as well to Whirlwind, yeah. um, just with this, a bit of different terrain sort of in the middle area around those watchtowers, a little bit different, and it, and it has two watchtowers instead of that one completely useless watchtower on Whirlwind. Uh, and yeah, so Curious is sending an Overlord out to the left as well, but he does already know uh, where MVP is. He would have seen that SCV when it came down, uh, and the Reaper as well just saw that. So that's heading across the map. Uh, like the first series, have to bring up again, Curious's micro is pretty damned good, so we don't expect this Reaper to do damage. It'll mainly be for scouting and maybe a couple link kills. Yep, scouting and map control. The biggest thing about the Reaper, actually, is that it denies the third base for quite some time, slows it down by at least a minute. Yeah, you can't send that drone out without Queens to help it. Yeah, so it really, it just forces Zerg to play the game the Terrans Ooh. want to. They, you have to make units, you have to get gas early on, and you can't get, take your third base right away. But of course it comes at the cost of a much later expansion for yourself, so it's just a more aggressive option. Yep, absolutely. Queen about to pop from that hatchery there, gonna have that extra bit of range, extra bit of DPS, and uh, Curious hasn't even lost a Ling yet. No, good control by him. His oh, natural is. queen is quite late though, um, kind of weird, but it, as you said, not, not losing anything, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so he's bringing a second Reaper up here. He's gonna keep pressuring a little bit, seeing what he can get done. MVP, MVP feels like there is a possibility for some damage here. I don't really see it though. We do have that God Vision as observers generally do. Uh, not too many openings in Curious's defense here. No. This is actually the first time that MVP, MVP brought his second Reaper out. Previous games, he did Reaper openings twice, and both games, he kept the second Reaper back, just yeah. used it defensively. Slightly more aggression from MVP so far at the beginning of the series. Yeah, but I, I agree with you. I don't see any way that this is actually going to accomplish anything. I, I think it's more just he's confident that Curious isn't looking for a Ling runaround or any kind of run by or any aggression early on, so he doesn't really feel the need to keep the second Reaper back, so it might as well just be out there looking for an opportunity. And a fast starport yeah. and two gases, so this is looking like Cloak Banshee. MVP going Banshee, or attempting to go Banshee, I believe in all three games at some point or another. Yeah, and man, I'm actually really happy to see this unit back in the fold again because Banshee was kind of like the lost unit back in, the, like I, I guess, in the mid sort of life of Heart of the Swarm. Didn't I was really pretty see okay much. with that. I didn't, yeah. I didn't mind that so much yeah. at all. And uh, a really fast layer, so we're back to two base muta. So this is pretty much a mirror of the, the first, first game, game think, yeah. the Whirlwind game in the previous series. Uh, quick Cloak Banshee versus two base muta, which is theoretically a build order win for Zerg. Not a win, but build order advantage for Zerg. Mm. However, in that game, we saw Curious just really unprepared for an initial Hellion Banshee attack. Yeah, he Plus, needs to lose. Not he needs to not lose 17 drones. Yeah, uh, that would be yeah. a good tactic. For that him would to, that would probably to be maintain a good move. the the half of his drone count that he lost there. Yep. Um, hopefully, given that it did catch him last time, he'll be more prepared this game. I'll be forefront in his mind, but you never know. Because it's really easy to underestimate that kind of thing. Like you're going for a. a an aggressive build yourself, you don't really think you're going to get attacked too much. That's not really what you're worried about. You're worried about getting to your attack, not to keep yourself alive, because you just don't think of that. But he's not producing any additional Hellions right now, so MVP maybe not being as aggressive this time. Okay. So with this Cloak Banshee, uh, it's, well, you know, generally the first Banshee comes out with Cloak, it comes out with that first initial push, which uh, MVP usually bolsters a lot more than this. Um, do you feel like we're going to see more Banshees a little bit later? Uh, he has to. I mean, he's put a lot of money into it, so it's kind I of a waste. I think he has to get at least two right away. Otherwise, yeah. there's no chance it's going to pay off. But the thing is, once he has the second one up, mutas are going to be, if not there, on the way. Yeah, and overseers as well, obviously. So um, The one nice thing about MVP is he, he really incorporates a lot of Banshees into his mech play, which is, in my opinion, really smart. Mm -hmm. So even if he doesn't make the most of it uh, initially, and he scans the lair timing, so he knows his two base... He did not see the Spire, so not necessarily knowing it's Muta, but there's not a whole lot of other good options, so he, he can assume. It's a yeah. safe assumption to make. And like mentioned in the first time these two players played together, when we were casting together, the the joint upgrades on that armory, making Banshees even more scarier than they were before. And once again, Curious hiding the Spire off in a little bit of a weird position, trying to catch MVP unawares with this unit tr uh, transition. Yeah, last time MVP did scan it anyway. Uh, this game, he has not. But like, I, 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 I'm pretty sure he's going to assume that it's going to be Muta, especially because he's already seen Curious try the two-base Muta this game. But that being said, it's still a pretty good situation for Curious, just because MVP is not going to have a good response to these mutas. He's going to be forced to play very defensively. It's going to be a long time before he actually has any response to them. And in that time, Curious can get, just get full drones to his third, transition into either a Roach All-In against Mech if he wants to. And it, it is going to be Mech. You do see an Armory coming up. Mm -hmm. Or transition into Mutaling Bane if that's what he prefers. But it should be uh, Roach timing, and it's going to be quite powerful, I think. I think these mutas are a great choice for Curious. Yeah, we're going to have 10 Muniz on the field here with another reinforcing, and they uh, will be more than enough to, do, to sort of get rid of this little army of MVP, which is more, he's moved out of the vision of Curious now. Curious heading straight to the natural of MVP, going to see if he can get some damage done here. This is before turrets. There are Marines and a Viking, though. 
Yeah, yeah, that should be enough to scare it off. That's a pretty low amount of mutas, but he's going to do some damage here. A couple of Widow Mines as well. Actually, Curious deciding to go wow. in and attack. That's a good choice, though. Those don't have combat shields. They're not really that beefy. Pretty easy to take out. And yep. the Viking, obviously, not not a, not exactly a high DPS unit. And we'll get a good look at the production oh, wow. of MVP as well. There's no turrets oh, at all in cancel. This is This is actually... Wow. Really, really big, but the Hellions do move in for a bit of a counterattack, and Curious with essentially no units back at home. That third hatchery will not be mining for some time, but the Muta is still unopposed in the main. Oh, yeah. Banshee's in the main. Oh, we missed that. Oh. My god, so uh, everything happening in three places at once. We've got the Mutas in the main of MVP. We've got the Banshees in the main of Curious doing sick damage. The Lair is actually in a spot of bother here. Where are the Queens? They've all died. Oh, they're down here dealing with the, with the Hellions. No transfusers on that Hurt Queen as well. Bit of a waste there from Curious. Now he's starting to micro the transfuse. He's trying to d deal with a, a million things in one place, but uh, yeah, MVP kind of uh, ran him around a little bit there, got that queen, but those muters, man. Yeah. They, they did a fair bit of damage there. They killed a lot of SCVs. If we look at the worker count, it's 48 for Curious to 40 with. Uh, 44 MVP, but of course with the mules. But he only has two orbitals, so that's not as big of a deal. He did end up losing one Banshee on that harassment. Obviously, lost quite a few Hellions as well. And the Mutas are still up, and they're still going to be a problem, because he's only going to be making one Thor at a time. It's going to be forever until he can actually secure a third base. He's not even trying to. He's actually getting up a third factory. So, really good play by MVP to make the most of that really bad situation and do a bit of a counterattack and get some damage in. But Curious really in control of this game right now. Yeah, man, he's got the income advantage as we just saw brought up on screen then. Roach Warren on the way with a great time, and the upgrade's going to be 1-1 one, one for the Roaches as well, straight away and uh, getting those extra gas. He's draining, draining up as well. Um, not afraid of an attack from MVP anytime soon. He knows that those uh, Hellions are still on the map, but right now just using the, the Mutas to gain some map control back from MVP. And uh, yeah, he's sitting pretty, man. He's going to be safe for a little while. Yeah, and it's more and more looking like MVP might want to do a two-base all-in, which I think is a, not necessarily a poor decision because he's kind of just in an uncomfortable position where he doesn't have a great option. But I really don't think it's going to be very successful here. He's just adding more factories, more units, no attempt to make a third CC, and he is making pure uh, Hellbat Thor, which is a more aggressive composition than trying to get tanks out. But he's going to be running into, as you said, already 1-1 one, one Roaches. Speed is on the way. And he has a pretty good economy, good production, and roaches are kind of the hard counter to this composition. Like, without tanks and without a big army mass, without a lot of Thors, it's going to be really tough for MVP to do anything here. One Muta taken out by that mine there. Nice hit there. But uh, the rest will regen these uh, Hellions heading into this third location of Curious. Getting a few drones in that transfer there. Nice little nice little shot there. Uh, well, nice little catch by MVP. But it looking like Curious might try and catch the Hellions. He's only got Lings on one side, though. The Roach is going to come up from the back, and it looks like the time of these Hellions will be done. If, with good control, he can get out of the Zergling. So with the Mutas there, those are going to fall, but they've served their purpose. They delayed that third base a lot. They got some drone kills. Yep. And the army of MVP is moving out. But with only two Thors, he does have the three Banshees. That's a lot of DPS. And if he can manage to deal with the Mutas, those Banshees can just really, really mess up the Roaches of Curious. But he has a Hydra Den finish as well, so he can go into Roach Hydra, which is about as hard as a counter to this composition as you can get. It's going to be all about the timing and how well he can keep those Banshees alive against the Mutas. Absolutely. So the ban the Banshees cannot fall for MVP. They're so important for him right now. Overseer does morph. The Vikings will need to focus, focus that down. Muta's trying to engage as well. MVP just... Uh, he lost just the Overseer. Yeah, he, he did lose the Overseer. Got sniped by the Vikings there. Roach is being pulled back. Some uh, A Corrupter and a couple Mutas on the right get a huge Thor volley to the face. And uh, looking like with all, these, with all these SCVs, MVP's in a pretty good position again. Yeah, those Banshees are just doing so much work. But for the actual ground fight, the Roaches just... Yeah, there's so many Roaches. It's just not that many. There's not nearly enough to break through with the uh, three Thors there. And the SCV is doing so much work keeping those alive, and the Banshee's dealing a ton of DPS above him. Yeah, the, the Banshees are just following the Roaches around. Wherever the Roaches go, the Banshees are there to shoot them on the head. And no additional Overseers being morphed. I don't know what Curious plans to do about these. Uh, there is the one Banshee maybe going to fall, but it's going to take out all of the Queens with it. And again, that, that's pretty much the entirety of Curious's anti-air. And more Banshees and uh, just reinforcing here. That, that third Banshee fell, and now he's just reinforced it with another third Banshee. The DPS is still there for MVP. He's going to deny this plus two upgrade for Curious. And Curious almost getting rid of his other Evo Chamber for some reason. And uh, MVP is in a, an amazing position here. He has so many Thors. I think the SCVs are gone now. But they uh, will it be enough here from Curious to push this back? Will the damage have been done anyway? The Curious, actually, the Roaches are starting to fall. I think that, the, yes. The Banshees and the Thors will do the job, and he's pushed back into the natural MVP in a beautiful position once again. 
MVP is completely all in here, though. This attack does not do lethal damage. The game is pretty much over for him. And a lot of roaches in production. Curious has a really good economy, and he's starting to add in Hydras now. Those Banshees without Cloak. I don't know. Curious can definitely still win this. If he gets in there, if he takes down one more Thor, he may be able to just out-reinforce it. Now he just I, wants the GG. I really think that was too, too early. I think he could have still fought back there. But MVP with a really, really strong all-in. And Curious seriously underestimated that. He didn't. He wasn't even aware that it was going to be a two-base all-in. He had produced 10-plus drones at his fourth base. If he had just making pure units, he would have held that easily. But he had no idea an attack was coming. There you go. So MVP taking a first game there. Pretty similarly, but uh, it was actually a lot closer for Curious to hold there, as Idra mentioned. Probably a bit of a premature GG. I, I really think he had enough reinforcements coming out, because he had Hydras in production. He had enough Roaches that he was going to kill at least one of those Thors. And MVP just had, like, no production. He did not have a good rally coming there. Yeah. And Hellions, you know, with Roach Hydra, Hellions barely matter at all. So, I don't know. But Curious, maybe he didn't even know that it was a two-base all-in. Maybe he assumed it was, like, a three-base very fast attack, and MVP had a lot more to fall back on than he did, because MVP was 100% all-in on that. Yeah. I, I think that Curious just didn't know. I mean, he's too good of a player to have, uh, you know, he, he just didn't, he didn't recognize the situation, which happens to the best of the best, but... Uh, uh, yeah, he, he knew what he, what he was doing against this mech composition was right. You know, getting the the the, uh, the heavy heavy roach with the hydras as well for the banshee, and he was he was doing the right thing. It was just a little bit too late, I guess. Yeah, he was just a little bit too greedy. If he hadn't droned up that fourth base, I think he would have been in fine position. Mm. Uh, so derelict watcher will be the next map here. Going to be a one v one map. Derelict Watch is, it actually plays kind of similarly to the big four-player maps, even though it is obviously a two-player map. It's very large, and the expansions are very spread out. Mm. So it is possible to kind of play it similarly. And MVP has shown that he, he's looking for mech on those kind of maps, on the big spread out maps, which seems kind of counterintuitive. Generally, you don't want to, you want to go mech on smaller, uh, more claustrophobic maps where you yeah. can just choke people out. Like but, Bacalon, but, uh, you know, he did bio in that game. Yeah, but those maps are generally for the more defensive mech, and MVP in all three games, whether it be three base or two base, he's been going for timing attack mech. Um, and again, you, you wouldn't think a big map is great for that, but no. he, he seems to have found that it works. Maybe it's because it gives him the time to establish an economy early on and get away with some, some greedy things early on that then set up his timing. But even that game, doing it for a two base all in on a really big, really long map, um, it's just kind of counterintuitive, but it's working for him. Mm -hmm. And he's got a lot of those... Uh trophies of yesterday those gsl pins on <laughs> his chest there with the gstl pin as well what a baller yes all right in the bottom left here from startel currently down one map can you tie the series this is curious talking to himself he is he did that a little bit yesterday as well when he's playing dream in the top right here from lgim this is mvp and fezzer always gets a little bit crazy when he introduces mvp observer camp he's an exciting around. player he is what an exciting player, yeah. You wouldn't think that, um, you know, mech is exciting because when it comes out, it's really slow and, yeah. and deliberate and... Uh, MVP can make anything exciting. There's no other player with the ability to just, like, go from come from nowhere and just turn it on and win a tournament. Yeah, like a lot of people actually, in all honesty, would have probably looked at this tournament and seen MVP and gone, you know, hey, he's not as good as he used to be. No, he should just be a non-factor here, yeah. really. But MVP is never a non-factor. He's just such a good player in terms of how he approaches tournaments and series, whether he prepares or not, just like going through the mind games of a match. And then, you know, he has his mechanics aren't amazing. He's not going to be like a bogus where he just comes out of nowhere with mm. twice as many units as you have, no matter what happened early in the game. But he's going to outthink you and outsmart you, which is really funny because going back to Brood War, he was like the epitome of a robotic, mindless Terran. So it's, it's really interesting to watch his development over the years because he's the exact opposite of that now. And it looks like we're going to see a CC first from him this game. Yeah, it does certainly look like that. And obviously, uh, with Curious Drone Scouting uh, being a little bit more cautious in this game, uh, he, will know that he will know that as well. He'll see that uh, no barracks there. He's back in the minerals, so he absolutely knows that there's going to be a CC first. Yep. Um, so the, the Drone Scout here, you think that Curious possibly afraid of an 11-11 or something crazy like that? He did actually just scout straight to MVP's main, though. He just wanted to have a good idea, I think. That he did. Um, more so, it's kind of dangerous to Overlord Scout on this map because there's no good place to park it. If your opponent makes a Marine first, the Overlord is going to die. So some Zergs will rely more on the Drone Scout instead of their Overlord. Um, but MVP has shown no real tendency to two racks in any recent games I've seen of him. So yeah, I don't think Curious I, was I don't too afraid of that. I don't actually remember one. 
I'm trying to think of where MVP might have done it, but I don't actually remember. Maybe like a GSTL match way back. Yeah, he's done it plenty in the past, but and we do see three hatchery before pool from Curious. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. in my opinion, the best response to uh, quick CC. It just gives you such a good economy, and there's nothing you really have to worry about. Um, even if they put up a bunker there or something, you're in no danger. There's nothing really a uh, CC first Terran can do to stop it. Yep, fighting fire with fire, fighting greed with greed. Gets the Idris oh. seal of approval. Oh, getting that drone core there. That was kind of sloppy from Curious. I don't know why he went back up there. Um, I don't think he actually saw the gas. Maybe maybe he was trying to go in and check on that. That's the only thing yeah, I can think possibly, of. Yeah, possibly. he didn't. But, I mean, no one no one goes Marines, except for maybe Bomber. And he's always really like that style of play. No one really goes Marines after a CC first anymore. It's almost always Hellions. So that's a safe assumption to make. It's kind of sloppy of him. Mm -hmm. MVP heading straight over to the third location. He's going to see that hatchery very quickly. And, uh, yeah, so uh, gasless play from Curious here, being pretty greedy. Yeah, completely gasless. A lot of the times you can go three hatch, then drop a pool, and then drop an extractor, and still get speedling out time to deal with Hellions. But this, he's going to have to rely on Queens or a spine crawler or something uh, for at least the first couple pairs of Hellions. He won't have speedling for that. Mm -hmm. Getting in here for a bit of a look. MVP getting a factory and a gas back at home. He's actually getting both gases back at home with that factory. Uh, getting both gases. Uh, kind of seems like we're going to see Cloak Banshee again. Uh, double gas early on. That's the only tech it really makes a lot of sense for. There's other things you can do, but I, I'd say Banshee is by far the best. Plus, MVP has shown uh, you know, a pretty big preference for Banshees in the game so far. Kind of the MVP unit for MVP at the moment. He's yes. really loving those Banshees, and they're definitely putting in good work for him, that's for sure. That was absolutely the game winner last time, because if he just has, even if he has a couple more Thors instead of the Banshees, he just gets overwhelmed with Roach Hydra. But the Banshees just did so much damage. It's actually gross how much DPS they do. It and is. Seeing the Banshees back in play again and back in the metagame, starting to remember how powerful they are. <laughs> it's a good unit. Very, very good unit. And we do see double extractor coming up from Curious. That's right. So he's going to get his gas nice and quick as well. Um, oh, and he actually catches MVP being a little bit greedy. He had his Marines out overlords hunting. Oh, oh. That's, that's pretty cute. He's actually going to delay the Hellions by a good 10 seconds I or so I like stuff there. like this. This yeah. is smart play from Curious. I like doing it just because I know how much it has to annoy a Terran. <laughs> well, StarCraft's not just about playing the other player mechanically. You've got to inside, get inside his brain as well. Oh, and he sees the second factory. Oh, oh that's huge. That's actually, yeah, massive scout for Curious. So he knows exactly what MVP is up to right now. MVP wanted to go uh, heavy into Hellion production. So. And this is, a, this is a pretty good map for it. A bunch of big ramps. It's kind of hard to wall it off, but if you know it's coming, you can most definitely shut it down. Yeah, and, and we see a Roach Warren immediately playing no games with that. But a third CC coming up. This is not like an all-in. It's not any kind of real commitment for MVP. And as we see, we just throws up a starport and a second command center, and he's still going to be totally fine. He's just going to go into unit production instead of very heavy Hellion harass early on. Mm -hmm. uh, Curious still smartly, though, preparing for it just in case. It's pretty hard to read into MVP at this point. The Terran has the power to lift and change add-ons. And, uh, yep, so a couple of Hellions just coming in for a poke. Didn't quite get that creep shimmer, so... Uh... That will finish. No big dramas here. So there's, not a, there's a bit of a lull in the action at the moment. These Hellions probably won't get too much done. And Curious is actually pretty afraid. He's getting his Overlord speed before getting any upgrades. Oh. Uh, just so we can go in and check it out. So the Hellions get two drones there. Two drones for two Hellions. Oops. It's okay. Not However, he's not producing any other Hellions, so that pretty much gives up whatever map control he has. Of course, Curious doesn't know that just yet, but he's under pretty much no pressure at this point. Mm. So he's spreading creep. He's feeling pretty confident there. He's got, uh, what, two creep spreading queens? So that's actually going to spread creep pretty quickly here, especially considering this, uh, this map. And the roaches are out. They see a couple of Hellions here, meeting them in the middle of the map here. Uh, and MVP is actually going Cloak Banshee. Um, pretty big turnaround. And But Curious, like I said, getting that speed overlord, he should scout that really quickly, which is yeah, going to be great be, for him. He's beelining straight through the main here. He's actually going to see a siege tank pop out as well, I think. Yeah. Plus, plus one. I don't four. know. The, the tank's a bit far off. He might not get. Yeah. If he does get to see that, that'd be pretty big because it tells him that's not going to be like a heavy banshee all in. It's not going to be like blue hellion or uh, blue hellion banshee or anything like that. Well, actually, see, see, see the pack, the factory with the tech lab. You're pretty sure that you're going to spin. Yeah, like you said, it's not going to be blue flames. Probably going to be a, a siege tank here. So he does see the cloak upgrade going. He sees no upgrade going on the factory, and he does actually see the tank come out. So this is absolutely great for Curious. He puts up a few spore crawlers, keeps his queens around, and then he knows he's absolutely safe. But there's a Hellion run by into the third, and no speedling yet. Those roaches oh, wow. actually cost him his speedling timing. So with good control, MVP could get it, take down a few drones here. But speaking of good control, Curious doing a pretty good job so far. He lost a few workers there, but uh, MVP did lose four Hellions. He did. Um, 
those Hellions trading for drones is almost always a good good decision, unless you're yeah. really reliant on the Hellions for like defending links or something. But with no speed link upgrade even on the way, obviously not something MVP has to worry about. Scott's still lair timing as well, so MVP yeah. knows exactly what's going on, but at the same time, Curious knows what's going on as well. Absolutely. So both players being honest with each other right now I, through no fault of their own. Does he have Spore Crawlers up? I'm actually I not sure. I don't think he does. He doesn't have one, uh -oh. and he doesn't have any building. Uh, and those are cloaked oh. banshees. Yeah, this is actually going to be a lot of drone. He might actually have to evacuate this third. Yeah, this is. I don't know why he cloaks over, and it's a bit wasteful. But this is. I don't know. Curious. Just he. He scouted everything. I guess he thought MVP would pull off, and not really commit to it, given that it got scouted. But MVP again, winning the mine game is going to get quite a few drone kills here and waste a lot of mining time. Yeah, I'm not sure these roaches are going to do too much against this unit. Uh, they uh, do come up here to take a few shots for the team. Uh, meanwhile, drones are going down, and the third has been evacuated, as we feared for Curious. So a lot of denied mining time here and drone kills from these uh, from these banshees so far. Spore does finish in the natural though, at least. Um, so he does have the vision there, and he also has an overseer. Still another three drone kills, and the banshees are going to get away completely uncontested. And the third base already up and running for MVP. Even more drones going down. Really good Banshee usage. And kind yeah. of sloppy queen control. Uh, Curious could have been a little bit more on top of that. And really just kind of neglectful of him not to have a Spore Crawler up everywhere. Even if you think the Cloak is going to get cancelled, it's a worthwhile investment. Spores are so cheap. They can help against drops later on. They hold off Banshees later on anyway if happen, there happen to be more on the map. Uh, just really kind of greedy by him to not, not get that up and running. So right, Thor's already out for uh, for MVP, preparing for any kind of mutilist transition. But of course, we know that the, nothing like that's coming up. And also, the Thor's amazing against Roaches as well. Uh, he's going to go straight into Hive. Needs those Vipers. Needs to get those Hydralisks up. He knows the Siege Tanks are on the map. Good scan there from MVP. Does see that the Hive is coming. coming. Does know about the Hydralisk stand as well. Uh, yeah, so both players really preparing for each other. Uh, MVP gonna, is kind of dictating uh, dictating the flow, I guess. He's got, he's got the unit comp of choice. He's got a good critical mass of units as well. Getting those 2-2 upgrades. When 2-2 upgrades finish, he's probably going to move out, try and get something done. Yeah. Um, but uh, in the meantime, Curious preparing as well as he can. This isn't quite as good a map for the 2-2 timing as Frost was. There's no one position that you can control that really shuts down all of your opponent's production and is at the same time a really good position to hold, like a really hard position to attack into. Yeah, but if, like we look at, if we look at the supply differences, MVP has a plus 30 supply on a Zerg player. And it's not like Curious is banking up a lot of money to save for a big production round or anything. He's spending his money. He's just way behind because of all the damage that harassment from him he did. And four Banshees now. Yeah. That's, that's hard to deal with. These Banshees have plus one. Uh, they actually can just straight up engage spores. Um, so these spine crawlers will go down. Uh, anything that comes to this hatchery is actually gonna, a nice little hull position here. Going to get those drones on the gas and then leave without taking any, any, uh, any losses. MVP just continues to chip away at Curious basically for free. He hasn't even lost a Banshee yet this game. And uh, back at home, he's building up such a strong army. And we've seen what he's done with this push from, from inferior positions. We've seen that he can make it work even if he doesn't have as much of an advantage. And this game, he's, he's what is that, a 30, almost 40 supply advantage. And that's really hard to deal with. Yeah, he's just about max, man. 2-2 about to finish. Blue Flame also finishing. And uh, Aspire has begun for Curious here. And um, yeah, getting that Hydralisk Muscular Augments. He noticed that these Hydras weren't too good at chasing down anything there. And there's that move out on the plus two. MVP going to try and get this game done with. And actually, a pretty big mistake from Curious here. He never started his plus two Carapace. It's just starting now. So obviously not going to kick in for this attack. So he's going to have a pretty big upgrade disadvantage as well as having to deal with those Banshees. He does have Vipers out. That's the one thing he has going for him. We saw in the first game on Whirlwind how effective he could be with those. But this is just such an army disadvantage for him. Banshee's being pulled right into the fray and then cloaking, but there is detection here. They do get taken out. Bar one, though. A couple, couple Banshees at the back, actually. Lots of Hellbats with plus two and Blue Flame doing a lot of damage on the ground. Tanks at the back doing a lot of damage as well. The Thors haven't even joined the fray yet. They're at the back just shooting stuff in the air. They're ready to join anytime soon here. Just Roach is being built by Curious here. The, ro the Roaches are a good choice. Ooh. He managed to take out all those Banshees, so he doesn't have to worry about anti-air. He can just kind of try and flood in with Roaches, but it might be too little too late. The Roach counterattack has killed a bunch of supply depots, but it's just kind of sitting out there. Uh, Curious not really multitasking that well. He's actually taking extreme damage at this third with the macro hatch. All of his drones are dying. The blue flame hellbats are destroying stuff so fast. It's amazing. They're actually engaging roaches and winning as well, which is something that the hellbat can still do. And uh, there's a, just all these untouched mech units in the middle of all that creep of Curious. Yeah, this it, it keeps getting worse and worse for him. Uh, every game, it seems like he has more and more trouble dealing with this build. And this is the exact same build that hit him 
in both games, one and three of the previous series. He just I, can't move out of this little pocket. No. MVP just has the timing down perfectly. His units are so strong, and he gets in the position, just doesn't let it go. Curious battling through, pulls one of those siege tanks out so we can get up there into the main to try and save what he has left, which isn't much. It's um, almost nothing at all. Almost fact. nothing at all. <laughs> and uh, these Vipers sort of just watching the battle from above. They're not really useful in this engagement in particular, but they are going to be useful if he wants to try and deal with those tanks. Hellbats heading towards that other fourth location of Curious. And um, yeah, he has no drones mining uh, really anywhere at this point. Yeah, that fourth was the last mining base. It's gone. He now has two hatchery production and a massively inferior oh, army. And MVP has disgusting. won this. That's Down a lot of dead drones. And that's a dead Zerg player. GG, MVP taking a 2-0 there with his mech composition. Wow, he's actually just getting better as time goes on. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I thought the two-base all-in was kind of questionable, but there was nothing questionable at all about that last game. He just completely dominated that. A little bit sloppy by Curious not having the spores up, but I don't know if that would have even mattered. Uh, it just seemed like he didn't have any answer for that timing attack. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame there. N used to seeing a little bit more solid play there from Curious. Yeah. So he does pack up because, unfortunately, that does mean his IM run is over, and MVP will uh, clear the group. MVP does make it through. He's on into the brackets. Mm -hmm. That's, you, you just can never count him out. It doesn't really matter. He's going to be winning StarCraft tournaments five years from now. Even if no one else is playing them, he's still going to be around <laughs> and winning somehow. Well, it'll just make it easier for him. <laughs> I suppose it will. So, yeah, I really wish that we had those DX racer chairs. They look pretty comfortable. Do you have one at home? I do. It is very comfortable. Very nice. I wish I had one. I don't... Yeah, I wish I had one at home. I don't think there's actually an Australian real retailer for DX DX racer chairs. Not sure if there's any American ones either. I just stole one from the EG house before. <laughs> before. Smart guy. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break here. Before long, though, don't go away. There will be a resume of the SC2 action here at the Intel Extreme Masters in Singapore. See you soon.